working in China, whether you're a teacher or a businessman, doesn't matter, and you have a large sum of money, how do you get it out of China? I get this question a lot from new people that come to China. You know, if you're coming here, don't come here with zero money. You know, a lot of people will come here on a shoestring budget and they make it work. Uh, others will take a small loan from family or friends, then they say, oh, I'll repay you as soon as I get my first paycheck. So they get their first paycheck, sometimes two months. So they immediately say, okay, how do I get some money to my mother? How do I get some money to my friend? I borrowed some cash and they're expecting it. This is not a smart thing to do. Save some money and bring some cash when you come here. So you're not put into this situation. Now, before we begin, I want to just mention that I am not a professional. I don't get paid money for talking about this kind of stuff. This is just a discussion between me and my friends here on YouTube. I'm not an expert on these things. This is just my own experience. A few years ago, I had this problem about trying to get money out of China. I had a little bit of cash that I had saved up. And I went to the American consulate uh, for some kind of gathering. It was like a town hall kind of thing. This was like three years ago. I posed the question, how do I get money out of China? And in the town hall were a lot of business people. They were you know, foreign trade people and teachers and many of them had the same problem. And we were just, you know, spitballing different ideas. The one guy said, oh, there's a, there's a bank in Dongguan. Outside the bank is a man with a big bag of money. And you go to him with Chinese Yuan and you uh, exchange that for dollars. And I heard that. It just sounded like the most shady thing possible, right? But... It is true. They will point to some random dude out on the street or to an office nearby and say, go there and they'll take care of it. And it's completely illegal. And of course you are susceptible to you know, counterfeit dollars if you do that. Obviously you should not do that. Everyone knows those guys, you know, Serpent ZA and uh, Lao Wai 86, right? They're like the most famous bloggers in China. And Lao Wai 86 just recently posted a video about him selling his house. Buying a house in China is a completely different video. I'm not going to talk about that, but here's the thing. He sold his house. Now he has a large sum of money that he needs to get out of China and get it to America. That is harder to do than you can possibly imagine. So there's two parts of this. The first is converting your Chinese Yuan to another currency. And there are many, many rules that the Chinese government has on doing this. It's very tightly controlled. The other part is getting the money out of China and into your home country's bank account, which is a completely different set of problems. And I get it. I understand why. The Chinese government has a problem with capital flight out of the country. And it's not necessarily foreigners, but it's local Chinese that make a lot of money and want to invest overseas in property or businesses. As China gets more and more wealthy, a lot of the money is leaving China. They want to put a stop to that. They want more investment in China. And for us foreigners, we make our money here and the government wants us to spend the money in the local economy. So it to makes total sense of why they do this. There are still ways to get your money out, but it is very hard. There's a couple of different methods and I don't want to go into the illegal methods. That's not what I recommend anyone no one should be getting their money out illegally. You should be doing it legally. Another problem that you're gonna run into, I don't care what bank you use, Bank of China, China Construction, any of the major Chinese banks, is that there are so few foreigners, especially in tier two, tier three cities, that have these capital requests and requirements that even the bankers themselves, the tellers, the bank managers, don't fully understand the rules either. You need to be the expert when it comes to this. I have two banks that I, that I work with. I went into those banks and they both told me two different stories. The rules change constantly and they change without notice almost overnight. For example, in my tax video that I did a couple of months ago, I'll put the link down below so you can watch that. It's a good video, watch it. I mentioned the five-year rule. If you're in China for five consecutive years, all of a sudden your worldwide income is now taxable by the Chinese government. That was recently changed. It's now a six-year rule, which is great. So you have an extra year. And of course, this, the simple way to reset that rule is to leave China for 30 consecutive days and then come back and then it's reset. Let's begin with the basics. The daily limit for exchanges out of RMB for foreign individuals without any additional documentation, just a passport, is $500 per day. 
and a day meaning any 24 hour period. And there's a limit of 50,000 US dollars or its equivalent in other currencies per year. Most tellers, they don't know the rules themselves. So they'll say, oh, this $500 limit doesn't exist. In fact, many banks will say, no, you can't do it. You're a foreigner. <laughs> so, but every time I go to the bank and try to do something other than just deposit or, or withdraw money, the teller has no idea what they're doing. So they have to call over a supervisor who then calls a manager and there'll be three or four people all hovered around a computer trying to figure out how to do it because I'm a foreigner. And there's, it's mostly because the software is not set up for foreign individuals. And it's so rare that they have foreigners that come in and need assistance with their banking. Now in the past, what I've done is I have gone to a Chinese friend that I trust. I give him a bunch of yuan and he goes to the bank and exchanges it for US dollars. Chinese nationals can do it for free. But many banks are now requiring the local Chinese to provide travel documents, such as a plane ticket or itinerary, in order to exchange for those local currencies. So that option has been taken off the table. Another interesting little side note is that I have friends who have been able to get more than the $500 limit exchanged. I have a friend of mine who's in town and doing that right now, getting, you know, trying to move money around. And I was telling him about this video and, you know, the limits that I learned. He's like, well, there's this one place next to an Indian restaurant that will do a $1,000 uh, exchange for me per day. And I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> it's not a bank. It's just a currency exchange place. There are other options out there. Whether or not they are legal, that's a different story. Now, it is possible to exchange more than $500 per day in currency. Uh, but you need additional documentation to do this. Uh, I have a list here. If you are legally working in China, you know, you hold a work permit or a residency permit or the ever elusive green card that nobody ever gets, the bank will require the following documents. You're going to need your passport. You're going to need your residence permit, copy of your work permit, temporary registration for uh, residence, which you get at the police department. You'll need that too a salary certificate stamped with your company CHOP. It's basically an income statement from your employer stating how much money you earn. Uh, it has to have that little red stamp, which is on all the paperwork here. And you have to have tax receipts for the last three months. And those tax receipts, you have to go to the tax bureau and print that out. <laughs> It's a real pain in the neck, I know. All these different things and places you gotta go. If you need more than the 50,000 uh, limit exchanged into your um, home currency, there is a way to do it. There's lots of paperwork. You have to go to the, the State Administration of Foreign Exchange, the, or SAFE. It's an approval process. They have to basically approve it. So if you've made a large investment in a company or you sold a house, in order to get that money uh, into your an, into another currency over fifty thousand dollars, you basically have to be approved by the Chinese government uh, on a one-off basis to get it done. But you have to show exactly the process of the money, where it came from, and have you paid taxes on the income. This has proved a problem for many foreigners who, you know, do business under a. A pseudonym or they do business with local Chinese partners or their wives or husbands because their wives and husbands have their name on the investment and not the foreigner's name. If that's the case, they won't be able to exchange it. It has to be in your name in order to get this approved. There's all of these people running around China who know a guy. I hear that all the time. Oh, I know a guy that can do that. I know someone who has one she with the government and they can take care of that. Well, the next obvious question is how do you get the money out of China? Yeah, that seems to be the number one question that I get from a lot of people. There's different ways you can do it. You've got things like Western Union, uh, you got Alipay, PayPal, uh, you can do bank transfers, or you can just simply carry the cash out of the country. Who doesn't like a nice cat cafe, right? <laughs> well, let's talk about the different ones. Let's start with uh, Western Union. Now, there's Western Unions all over the world, and there's some advantages and disadvantages of it. I've never used Western Union, nor do I ever want to. Western Union can only be done in US dollars, which means you still have to find a way to convert the 
RMB into US dollars. So that's gonna cost you a little bit of money. And it's uh, not something that you can send to an actual bank account. You have to actually have someone pick up the cash on the other end. Western Union is also very heavily monitored by government. So if you do it too much, you're gonna get flagged and you might be asked questions because it's a very common way for people to launder illegal money. Plus, you know, some of the places that you find the Western Union shops are like in supermarkets and they're not always staffed by the most knowledgeable people. The newest way that people are doing it is through Alipay, WeChat Pay, things like this. However, foreigners are not allowed to do this. Only Chinese nationals are. Oh, and the other people who are allowed to do it are Chinese green card holders, which is very few. In the past, you would, you know, ask one of your local friends, hey, can you hook me up with some cash transfers? But here's the other problem with that. When you use your local friends to help you with money issues, you're putting them at risk because then the government's going to ask them a bunch of questions of what they're doing, why they're doing it. And if they have a lot of money transactions associated with their account, they could be flagged for audit by the tax bureau. Uh, they could get hit with income taxes on money that you gave them. So you really don't want to put your local friends at risk. One other thing that you have to remember is that the bank accounts here in China can be frozen just for being under investigation by the government. So you really don't want to <laughs> do anything that would cause a red flag. Because once your bank accounts are frozen here, it's very hard to get them unfrozen and you're stuck and there's nothing you can do. In fact, the banks could not only freeze your account, but they can also, you know, confiscate all of your money and you have absolutely no recourse. So again, it's very important that you do everything on the up and up and everything legally. Now you can always do a bank transfer. Do you think that that's very simple, you just go into a bank and do it? It's not. It's one of the very first things that I tried to do when I came to China. It took me weeks of asking questions and then the bank asking their bosses, who then in turn asked other people and said, okay, you gotta do this. And I said, all right. So I started getting tax records and employment records and all this stuff together. And they said, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, we can't do it. And then it also depends on the bank that you are transferring it to. For example, back in America, I use a military federal credit union. I'm an old troop, so that's what I've got. But it's not an international bank. They don't deal in foreign currencies. So I would have to transfer the money to an intermediary bank. In this case, it would be some bank in New York. I don't remember which one. And then they would take a hefty fee. Then they would convert the currency into US dollars and take a hefty fee and then transfer it to my bank account at the credit union. And all it would just sap so much cash, it was not even worth it. So all of those inquiries and all of that legwork that I did, and I didn't even go through the process. Another tactic that I've heard and heard talked about is using PayPal. You know, you use a Chinese PayPal account and then you have a foreign PayPal account. Problem is the Chinese PayPal account, you cannot hold foreign currency in it. It's all in Chinese Yuan. So when you transfer it, you have to exchange the money into the currency that you want. The exchange fees are very high. Keep in mind, of course, that the maximum amount of money that you can take out of the country just without any additional approval is 50,000 US dollars on an annual basis. So all of these transfers, whether it be small or large, they all accumulate over time. There's just simply taking the cash and walking it across the border. There are limits to this, however. Uh, it's 20,000 RMB that, in cash that you're allowed to take out, or 5,000 US dollars or the equivalent of another currency. Remember, China does have exit checks, you know? It's not like America where you, when you leave America, nobody stamps your passport. Here, they check you, you go through customs, you get scanned. So if they see you with a large amount of cash, leaving the country, they're going to question you. They're going to ask you, you know, hey, where's this money coming from? Where is it going? Have you paid your taxes on this cash? And they can hold it. They can even confiscate it if they want. So let's say you have about 20,000 in renminbi that you want to take across the border. And then, you know, 
Just go to one of those currency exchange booths at any border crossing. Of course, those exchange rates are ridiculously high and you're gonna lose a lot of cash by doing it. It's even worse if you go to Hong Kong. The currency exchange in Hong Kong airport, first they convert the money to Hong Kong dollars and then they convert it to US dollars. So you're getting hit twice. It's a ridiculous scam. Don't forget that there are limits to how much cash you can bring into the United States. I think it's 10,000 US dollars. You don't want to raise any red flags when you're coming into the United States either. Now let me tell you about the, what I think is the easiest and the best way. And that's just to simply use ATM cards in other countries. If you look on your bank card, it's not Visa, it's not MasterCard, unless you have a credit card. It is Union Pay. So if you go to the Union Pay website, it's in English, and you can look up all the Union Pay ATMs throughout the world. And if there's one in your hometown, for me, it's at, I think it's at Citibank. There's a couple of them. Uh, being from Southern California, there's an awful lot of Chinese tourists. But you can also find them in Japan and Thailand. I was able to do it in the Philippines and Vietnam very easily. And you just withdraw the cash straight from the ATM in the local currency and the exchange rate is very good and all you're paying is a small fee to the ATM it's like the ATM fee again though there are limits to how much you can do but it is the easiest and in my experience it is the cheapest way to get money from one side of the world to the other and they say oh Paul what if what if I'm not leaving China what if I have to stay here and work and I need to send money home Another thing that you can do, and a lot of foreigners do this, is they get a second debit card for their account, and then they mail that debit card to their friends and family back home, and that way their friends and family can just take the money out of the account, uh, as you would if you were in that country. That's an easy way to send money home very regularly at a very cheap cost. And don't forget, I'm talking about very small amounts here, not large amounts. If you've got large amounts, you've got to go to SAFE. And you gotta fill out a ton of paperwork and be approved. So one more thing to keep in mind, if you have a debit card, make sure that the bank turns on foreign withdrawal on your account. Some accounts you're able to withdraw money, some accounts you are not. And if you go to a place like Macau, for example, I'm unable to use the ATMs in Macau because in Macau you can use Union Pay, but they also require a chi mainland Chinese ID card in order to withdraw they have like a little chip in the id card which authorizes the withdrawal as a foreigner i don't have a chinese id card so i'm unable to access my accounts in macau unless i go specifically to the chinese bank bank of china is there and a couple other ones but make sure that your bank actually has a branch that is open there and you can't use the atm you have to go to the teller here's another tip and You'd be surprised how many foreigners I meet here in China that don't do this. Spend your money in China. You know what I mean? When I travel overseas or I go home back to America, I don't put it on my American credit card. I don't even use that thing. That's just for like deposits and stuff. I spend my Chinese money for plane tickets, for car rentals, for hotel bookings, tours, anything I can. I use a Chinese app and I spend Chinese money on it. Even if I'm like doing a road trip in America and I'm in the middle of it and I need a place to stay, I will revert to my Chinese travel app and book the hotel through it so I use my Chinese money. Here's the other kicker is that if you do that, oftentimes it's cheaper. For example, uh, I reserved a car, a rental car at LAX when I go home in a few weeks. Well, it's starting to rain on me. Ah, and this rental car you know, it was about 40 US dollars per day. And that's for a nice rental car. Here's the thing though, that includes everything, taxes, fees, and the insurance. If I did this with American dollars, uh, that would just be for the rental. I would have to pay more money for the insurance and, uh, and fees. Not everything, but a lot of things you'll find are cheaper if you use it through a Chinese booking website. If you're gonna spend money, you might as well do it in the currency that you have. Of course, that's not everything when it comes to moving money around. I don't want to come off as the expert here, but I get a lot of these questions and so I did some research and I made this video. If you out there have other methods that are within the uh, legal framework of China about moving money in and out, if the rules have changed as they often do, or if 
uh, I didn't explain things properly, by all means, please comment below and let's have an open discussion about it, okay? As always, thanks for watching.